So one of the challenges I've found with the car here is this this uh, this badge here, this decal, this R badge is, is quite badly worn. So what I'm looking to do is replace that with a brand new one, which I've been able to find off a well-known auction site. So if you look there, you can see the difference. Much better. So just checking, yep, it's exactly the same size. This is the same one as you get off uh, an XJ, even though it's going on an S type. So uh, that's all good. Now, there's a little bit of an unusual technique to uh, getting this off. So what I'll be using is a regular hairdryer as my heat gun. And that will just soften up the glue that holds on the badge. And then after that, I'll use some of this. I don't have bad teeth. Well, I don't think I've got bad teeth. No one's told me, but I'll use some of this. It's dental floss. And then what I'll do is just get behind there and just be able to remove this badge. So that's the plan. So we'll crack on. Just making sure that it doesn't get too hot so I don't want to damage the paint. No chance of that probably on this cold day. So I just want to get it finger warm. So I can feel that starting to come a little bit loose now. Only a little bit. Just need a little bit more working to get it nice and warm. So now I'm just going to have a go with the uh, floss. So I'm just going to get a section of floss out here, just like I would for doing my teeth. There we go. Let's see if I can work that in. It's getting behind badge. So you can see here we're just about done. Uh, the floss will probably uh, break if you exert a bit too much pressure so I just doubled up a couple of lengths and what I'm doing is ever so often I'm just reheating it because it's very cold today just to keep the glue nice and sticky and easy to break down and as you can see here I'm, I'm nearly done I'm just being careful now not to make sure to make sure that the edges aren't catching and damaging the paintwork so I'm just being really really cautious as, uh, as to how I uh, proceed just now So there we go. So now also what I'm going to do now is see if I can try and get as much of that as possible, just leaving me the outline so that uh, I can then use that to line up and stick the new badge on. So what I'm going to do is spin more hair dryer and then I'll just see if I can just gently uh, prise off some of this uh, sticky back in here. It looks like some sort of industrial tape actually. So that's what I'm going to do next. So hopefully now you can see we've got most of it out. I've literally just been pushing that off with my fingers. I've been keeping it warm with the hairdryer to keep the glue nice and supple. What I'm going to do now is just use a bit of uh, Menzerna. This is a fairly coarse grade yellow tip one. I'm just going to use that with a microfiber cloth just here just to see if I can get the remaining glue off with using that. Uh, coarse cutting compound without damaging the paintwork and then I think we should be good once it's cleaned up to then proceed to stick on the new decal badge. Okay so I'm pretty happy with that you can see here we've still got a bit of an outline here and now that allows me to line up the uh, new badge so none of this will be visible when I put the new badge on but it's now got plenty of surface clean surface to bond to properly so uh, I'll now have a go at trying to offer up the new decal badge. Okay, remove the uh, backing paper. Got a nice clean uh, surface on there.
So that's now on nice and firm. Yep. I've got the outline just so. Just matching the old one so I know it's lined up. And that will just now just cure on there quite nicely. And jobs are good and So the next job that needs attention is the cup holders. These look a bit messy, a little bit scratched. These will be the original ones from uh, 2003. And the good news is uh, it should just simply pull out and then I can replace with this new one I got here. This is from a uh, later models it's got the later style ones so this kind of supersedes the original ones just found in there so this is the one that you'll also find in the um, xj's from the mid noughties as well so let's just go and uh, pull that out and hopefully it should be a really quick job and i should just give it a bit of a wiggle there we go that's uh come out pretty easy interesting you can see here we've got a little coinage tray or some sort of storage tray if required but i'll, I'll leave that in there and now i'm just going to pop the uh new one in and all it does is um it just literally just clips in so it should be pretty straightforward so let's just uh, pan out a bit and hopefully we should just better Pop that in and get the tabs lined up right. Although, I say that, I may have to take that tray out. That's better. The tray was actually obscuring the fit. So I'm just now going to click that into place. There's some, just some tabs that's holding in place. And now we have cup holders that look pretty new, pretty contemporary. So I'm pleased with that. Easy job. So one of the things I like to do on all of my cars is fit one of these. This is a SeaTac Comfort Indicator Eyelet and it basically gives you a traffic light health status of any of your, your battery that's connected in and this will literally just connect to the battery and then it also means that in here there's an option so you can plug in a c-check charger and this is really useful because it then means that if the car's not being used for a little bit, we can just literally plug this in and run a C-Tech battery charger. C-Tech battery charger onto uh, and keep the battery tip top. So let's just go and fit that just now. So, so I think uh, hopefully it's coming out okay, but I've now got the eyelet connected onto the positive terminal. And then I'll look to connect this negative one onto the earth just over there. Nice and straightforward, hopefully. And then job should be done, hopefully. Okay, so we are connected on the positive and we're also on the on the earth. So now you can see the traffic light indicator it may see it's flashing or pulsing pulsing red so now all I need to do is pop the uh, cover back on throw this through the boot line and then I think my job's job's done and everything's good so there we have it nicely fitted in and ready to connect for the C-Tech charger 
thank you for watching. I hope you found some of the content useful. I plan to make a bit of a series as and when I make various maintenance improvements, restorations to the Jaguar STR. If you did like, then please do give the video a like and consider subscribing if you're not already. Thanks a lot.